Hello, everyone. Jose J. Garcia with Mohom University here. Very special guest, uh, Marshall, Fire Department. Mr. Garrett, how you doing, sir? Doing very well. How about yourself? Good, good. So, you know, one thing that we always talk about, you know, with our manufactured housing is safety, which is huge. And that's with anything, you know, the fires and prevention, that sort of thing. We made previous videos, but we figured to ask even further questions to who better than the Marshall himself. So that's why we're here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes, sir. So how long have you been now a marshal for this department? I've um, been a fire marshal with this department for just about five months. I'm, I had uh, about four or five years of experience doing the same kind of work, but not as a fire marshal in the city of Decatur. Um, and I, but I worked for the city of Decatur for about seven or eight years as a firefighter. And I still work as a firefighter um, with the city, the county, with Walton County, but I just do it part time on the weekends and at nights. So, okay. Now he's mentioned in Decatur, that's Georgia. For those of you who don't know, you know, I'm located east of Atlanta, about 45 minutes from Monroe at this time, but Decatur's within the perimeter. So, okay. Um, so what is your knowledge in manufactured housing? Oh, um, nothing more than really nothing more than the basics. I mean, I know that, um, that it's a home like any other home and they, uh, because of the nature of, in which they're manufactured, did they, they have sort of a, kind of a, like a caveat of being easily um, affected by storms and fire and stuff like that. But I, I know that with the proper precautions, you can sort of eliminate any, any, any of that stuff, except for you know, natural disasters and stuff like that. So, sure. Now, I grew up in a mobile home, mobile home so I, I know all too well with the investment. So you never lived in one, you kind of just know. Oh. I, well, my uh, parents, when I was first born, I, was, I don't remember, but when I was born, my parents and I lived in one for about a year or two. Okay. And then um, I saw a family who live in mobile homes, and I have friends who live in mobile homes, so I'm, I'm well aware of them. I'm, I'm, I've been exposed to them. So, but I just sure. have, not as an adult, I've never really lived in one or anything, so. Okay. Have you ever been involved in a call with, due to a fire that involved a mobile home? Yes, sir. I have. And, um, only a few times, just uh, we've never had one since. And I asked the guys here, they haven't had one in the city of Monroe in a while. I think it's maybe been basically like five or six years. Wow. Um, there was, an, I went to one of the county maybe a year ago, something like that. So they're not as predominant as one would think. So, sure, even though they're easier to catch on fire. Mm -hmm. And that's what then we'll talk about that. But uh, what is a typical response team to fire? I guess call them would come in here my house is on fire oh and so in the city of Monroe you get the whole the, everybody goes so you'll get two engines and a ladder truck which the ladder truck is that it's kind of a they do the all truck work but they do like more um, go in a rescue they do more like the pulling and pushing and breaking and that kind of thing and then the engines put out the fire and then you also put confirm structure fire in Monroe you get uh, mutual aid from the county so you'll get another so you end up probably getting about, I don't know, probably like eight units out there. Wow. Um, yeah, you get, it's a pretty good, in the city of Monroe, I would say that, that um, the really quick response time here, because I mean, we're right in the center of everything. And then the county also has a really good response time. So I can be very proud of everyone who works and does a good job in this county and city and everywhere. So. Yeah, and you mentioned the last one five years ago, so that's, either people taking precaution or taking better care, I suppose, but that's good to hear on that. You know, statistics show that a mobile home and single-wise, you know, they have a single, double, mm -hmm. but the single-wise have a statistic time of five minutes, mm -hmm. five to seven minutes to burn out. Um, what's your input on that? I mean, is that about accurate? Yeah, it's about accurate, but at the same time, nowadays, people don't really understand this, That, but it, the truth is now, since everything is more, everything in our homes is furnished with more synthetic stuff and it's more, everything is burns quicker. So even, um, not just a mobile home, sometimes if you have a, a smaller single family residence that's just a wood frame structure, you can still, it's to be on the ground, you can raise that in maybe six to eight minutes if everything's going, you know, very quickly. So nowadays it just, it's time matters and like being able to get water on the fire really quickly. It's mm -hmm. just ultimately because earlier on, Everything used to be built out of wood and more natural things, but now everything's sort of just more synthetic. Everything, you know, your couch is basically just made of fossil fuel. <laughs> yeah. So that was actually my next question: is what do you think is the leading cause of the fire? Well, the leading cause of fire is most of it, honestly is cooking fires. It's like the majority of like okay, that's the first number one cause. Of, but 
see involving that you will have like a grease fire and then it may like catch something on your countertop that you're not thinking about and it's just something that's very combustible because like i said it's a synthetic thing that you may have bought just at you know your department store or just a little tchotchke thing that you think would see and it goes up really quickly and then just lights the house off but cooking fires are the most the and not paying attention really i mean they're really easy to prevent if you just stay with it but a lot of people like just start and then they move on and they come back and you know, something happens so. yeah and, and like i said you know well, the first thing you see them usually usually it's the kitchen catch on fire and it blazes right it goes across but i've always been interested on um, typically when you put a fire out i guess it burns the whole the whole house can you figure out what started the fire yeah yes sir i'm um i actually do investigations here too as part okay. of the fire a lot of times your fire marshal and your fire department will do uh, inspections, investigations. And so then you just determine the origin, basically is what you're doing. You're kind of, there's a scientific method to kind of following back the the patterns of the fire and finding exactly where it started. And then when you can find where it started, then you can sort of use the material there to, to figure out what, if it was accidental or um, intentional, that kind of thing. Interesting. Huh, okay. What are some things people live in a manufacturer house? And I guess the same thing, uh, any home, you know, real estate, commercial, whatever it may be. But in manufacturing, what are some precautions people can take to avoid fire? The most important thing is to always make sure you have smoke detectors in every room and that they're always working. That's the biggest thing. I mean, you can get a fire extinguisher and stuff like that, but the most important, it's, it's really just about safety ultimately because anything can be replaced, you know? But the biggest thing to, Especially nowadays, like we're talking about things burn so much quicker, it's um, important to make sure that you're aware of what's happening and uh, be, be able to get out. I mean, sorry about that. Anyways. Oh, um, okay. But um, we're at the fire department, so this is to be expected, <laughs> absolutely. Right. <laughs> so the, uh, but um, with, with, the, with the fire extinguisher, it's, and they're good to have on hand, but I always advise people if you're ever in a situation, I always, always say only use fire extinguisher if you can't get out, but just get out, you know, like that's the most important thing is to get out, like just, just be aware of it and get out and stay out, so. Where all should there be a fire detector inside the home? You should definitely have one in your bedroom and all the bedrooms that people are staying in. Um, and you want to have one sort of near your kitchen, but I would put it sort of like maybe on the outside, like near the kitchen, but not directly in front of your stove, because otherwise you just have it going off all the time. So they were kind of sensitive. Um, I mean, it's good to have one in every room, but the most important place is the bedrooms. And you know, it's also a really good tip to sleep with your door closed. I mean, that's another thing. Just because you block the access to fire, it just won't, it, it has to have a path to travel through. So uh -huh. it'll keep going straight. I mean, it doesn't, it's not, it just gives you more time. Yeah. Interesting. So you mentioned fire extinguishers, and I have one. Most of you should have one. And for those of you rehabbing mobile homes, Heard it here as to where you should have a, you know, I, they ask me a lot of these questions, and you know, a lot of things I like to say is, you know, common sense, obviously, right. put them in every place, but that's good to know that every room should have one in a sleeping room with the door closed. That's good tips mm -hmm. on there. But as far as your fire extinguisher, how often do you recharge fire extinguisher for one? They're usually a, a, a spot a year, but really the, the best way to do it, and I always say this, is just to look at the manufacturer, the manufacturer's uh, information. They'll usually tell you on there, like when you need to have it. As far as a commercial building goes, they have to have it done every year. So every year they have a, a service comes out, they recharge it, they test it, they punch a tag, and then it's back in service. But unless you have that, unless you pay for that same service in your home, you just kind of have to keep up with it and look at the manufacturer's details and make sure you're making sure that you uh, are either probably replacing it or taking it to get recharged. Most of the time, it's, for a home extinguisher, it's more cost efficient just to replace it. I was about to ask, do you typically go recharge them or just buy a new one and kind of be done with it? You buy, you, uh, some people can recharge them. There's some places to do it, but like I said, most of the time for the at home ones, it's easier just to go buy a new one. And then when in doing that, then you can find the avenues where you can go turn your old one in as places to take them. So can they go to a local fire department and get a recharge there? The, the fire departments will recharge them. Okay. Um, we don't have, that's a completely, that's a different discipline. Like that's a whole, the, Recharging fire, smoking, or excuse me, fire extinguishers and stuff like that. That's a, that's a whole lot of things that go into it that we don't, we don't have the knowledge to do it, you know, so. Right. 
Well, either way, I can get you one, replace it, recharge it if you can, but have one handy. Uh, with the mobile homes burning down as quickly as they are, and you mentioned getting out. Should people even attempt to put them out and just basically call you guys? And I just always say call us. Like that's the best thing. To, you don't want to put yourself there. Are people, it, it's uh, you go through a lot of training to be a fireman, and then every year you go through training. And you're constantly being updated with the, the the job because it's constantly changing. You know, every, there's no such thing as a you never go to the same fire twice, and even even in the with having as much training as we have and being able to do this job correctly. I mean, we still get into like some troubling spots at times even with all the gear on and you know with flowing water so it's always the most important thing is to just get out and stay out for the residents because like i said earlier i know it's no one wants to lose all their worldly possessions but sure more than that more importantly just don't you don't want to lose your life in this situation you can replace even things you can't replace you still you just want to be able to remember them you know, you want to have that opportunity to continue to move forward. So it's always best just to, like I said, the only time I'd ever advise using a fire extinguisher is if you have one and you feel like you can't get out, you're trapped. You know, that would be the only time. More of a defense mode at that point. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so safety first, no, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, great. I think that's a lot of uh, questions, a lot of great tips, nuggets on there, and something we can definitely all learn from. Any, any final thoughts on how to stay safe, take precautions? Yeah, I think the one thing that people should try to um, remember or just at least do is just some real quick, simple tips. It's for everyone in the household to know what your smoke alarm sounds like. A lot of people will put them up and they don't know what they, like, you know, the, uh, mom and dad may test it when their kids aren't at home because the noise may bother the kids, that kind of thing. But the kids may never know what it sounds like. So when they hear it go off, they don't know what's happening. So know what it sounds like and know that if you hear it, you need to get out and stay out. That's the, if you hear that, get out and stay out. And then a real good piece of advice that I've been trying to tell people lately is to, with your family, make an escape plan. Like have an escape plan, know how to get out, then everyone have a place to meet outside this is safe meeting place. You know, so it's very good. And just have a, so everyone knows these things and then that way, I mean, that can assist you in things that are, other than a fire, you know, I mean, there's plenty of, I mean, not plenty of things that would cause you to all need to evacuate your house, but there's other things that, and if it was just second nature, you know, it's impossible to save a lot of lives. So that's a really good tip there. And I know we didn't have one not growing up. So, I mean, we didn't either. And I, I just, I just started <laughs> to one of my, in my house in the last year or two that because I picked up this, this uh, knowledge, just taking classes and someone suggested it. And I said, oh, man. So I just sure. made a little, I made a little scale of the house and said, here's all the ways you could, you know, yeah. I mean, it's a nice little, it's a fun little, um, it could be a fun activity and then you, you can practice and you can do stuff with your family and, you know. I'm, I'm going to take that and associate you because if you don't plan, you plan to fail. So have a plan all the time, do the best you can. All right. Well, Garrett, it has been a pleasure having us here today. A lot of questions have been answered and I'm sure um, a lot of people will be asking a few more. So this video will be posted on, uh, on, on all social media, including our YouTube channel. All right. All right. Well, Jay Garcia with uh, Mohome University. Gary here, Marshall. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much.